recording. And um, again, uh, thank you all for coming today. Uh, again, my name is Corey Santoriello. We brought you here today for a virtual press conference to update uh, the status of COVID-19 in our communities. Uh, today we have with us Alan Larson, uh, market president and CEO at Sova Danville. We have Spencer Thomas, uh, CEO at Sova Martinsville and Dr. Sharonda Gondolin, CMO uh, for the market. And I think we're gonna kick it off with Alan. Uh, you wanna go ahead and take it away? You would, I'd love to. Thanks, Corey. Um, thanks everyone for joining. Um, we'll tell you up front, we have good news to share today. Um, it's always kind of helpful to, to hear the tone of this conversation. Thank you for your participation this morning, this afternoon. Thank you, especially for your participation over the last couple of years. This has been helpful for us to be able to get message out to our community. Um, and we appreciate your partnership in, uh, in helping to tell the message. Um, so the, the good news that we want to share um, is that um, effective next Monday, and Spencer will go through the details in just a minute, we're, we're opening up our visitation to our two hospitals, to family, friends, and, and guests. Um, for the better part of two years, um, we have restricted uh, visitation um, significantly for the protection of the visitors, um, our staff, and, uh, and for our um, patients as well. But we feel like that we're in a spot now um, where we need to make the community aware that the hospital needs them to participate with us in, in the healing art of, uh, of healthcare. Um, it's been challenging not having families be participating, um, especially those who are in COVID situations that are, uh, that are difficult to allow for visitors. So we're excited to, uh, to share with you the, the details of visitation. Um, we also want to make sure that the community hears the message. It's been challenging. We, we say, don't come, don't come, uh, we're overwhelmed, um, and now come, 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 we're fine. So I think it is very, I think, confusing for the community, but what we wanted to share with you today is the status of COVID, the status of our hospital, and um, encourage the community to use your healthcare resources in, in your communities um, appropriately. Um, don't be afraid to come to the hospital when you're in um, in condition. We have seen our uh, volume and emergency departments in both Danville and Martinsville as well as across the country decline significantly during COVID. Um, and so I think our other message today, and I'll let Dr. Gunn Nolan talk about this more specifically, um, delaying care uh, for fear of, of COVID is, is not a wise decision. We really do um, we take our job seriously of being the, the community health care providers. Um, our mission of making communities healthier is what we do each day. And so as, as our role as being hospitals to these communities, as well as all of our um, urgent care and primary care practices in our communities, we're here to take care of you um, during uh, challenging times during COVID and, and uh, others as well. So. I'm gonna stop there and ask Dr. Gunn Nolan if she would just give an update, please, on where we are with COVID and, and why allow us to make a change in visitation now. Sharanda? Good afternoon, everybody. You know, 723 days of talking about COVID. Not that anybody's counting, right? Um, I am happy to report, and I even told the team, this is the first time it's felt a little different because I feel like this time I have some positive news. Uh, we still do have just under 10 patients in the market admitted for COVID-19, but I think that's one of the lowest numbers I've been able to report in a really long time. And it feels like it's been quite the fight to get there. For the state of Virginia, those that are unvaccinated are still 4.3 times more likely to get COVID-19. So I can't make that statement about having just under 10 without stating that vaccinations are still readily available, still help protect you and still so important in preventing death with COVID-19. Happy to see that amongst the floors, everyone's able to kind of take a deep breath. We're able to reassess where we are and almost after a tornado or um, even your own pulse check after you've finished that triathlon, I think we're all doing much the same. But what we would like to see is not to get back to a new norm, but to get back to our normal. 
so that we can get patients involvement with their families and, and have them come in and see their loved one during their care. Alan mentioned those that have been avoiding the emergency department out of fear of COVID-19. Our staff continues to use appropriate PPE protection based off of guidance from the CDC. The masking mandate and release for masking within communities that have low risk transmission does not apply to healthcare. So you will continue to see our staff mask. We expect our visitors and everyone coming into our building to wear that mask. Because we're able to take this pulse check and take this step back, we also understand that throughout this pandemic, there's been a fear for people coming to the ER, but also a delay in care for cardiac care. More people having that chest pain experience at home and not calling 911 and not seeking help. I wanna be really clear. If you have a fear to come to the emergency department because you're scared of COVID-19, you put yourself at even higher risk of, of something potentially worse. We want you to come and seek medical care. It's important that you do so. And delaying is, is really increasing your risk of, of permanent damage. And, and we are happy to serve this community. I think Alan and Spencer are gonna talk about our visitation changes, uh, which warm my heart to see that we're able to make those changes. But everybody also wants me to predict the future. And I'm just gonna say that we don't know what the future holds. Uh, we quoted Game of Thrones earlier with winter is coming and it will, and we'll face those challenges when we get there. But for now, I'm happy to say that the hospital is able to take a, a pulse check, take a deep breath, reassess our status, and maybe get back to our normal. Thank you, Dr. Gunn, Nolan, that's perfect. Um, Spencer, do you wanna talk specifically about what the visitation changes will look like? Sure, Alan, and um, I want to just um, highlight, as Dr. Gunn Nolan said, that one thing that will not change is the expectation that visitors, patients coming into the hospital will be masked. Uh, so that part will stay the same for us. Uh, and we'll send this out to everybody. It's posted on our website as well, or will be soon. So don't, don't feel like you have to, to grab every detail here, but I'll, I'll hit the highlights. Um, First, our visiting hours are going to be changing. Um, as you know, for the better part of two years, we've had limited hours, so we're gonna be moving back to visiting hours between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Um, this applies to patients in our, in our uh, med surge units, uh, labor and delivery, uh, most areas of the hospital except for the ICU. Uh, ICU visiting hours are, are, have always been, even prior to COVID, at the discretion of the ICU staff and, uh, and, and it's dependent on what's going on there and what's going on with the patient's condition. Um, so we'll allow two visitors, two well visitors to come and visit with the patient. So for most of the pandemic, we've been limited to one visitor. Uh, we'll still be screening folks for symptoms of COVID, still be checking temperatures and those things so that all that will remain in place. Um, for uh, patients that are here to have outpatient surgery or, or here to have lab work or x-rays or other things, they, they can, they're allowed to well visitors as well. Um, any of our pediatric patients, we're allowing uh, two visitors. We ask if both of those visitors either be parents or guardians. Um, and then for labor and delivery, same thing, two visitors, uh, two well visitors at any given time during the, during the eight to eight hours. And then last but not least, and this is a change, uh, we've, we've been under visitor restrictions in our emergency room for almost the entire pandemic. Uh, now we, we feel safe saying that once a, a patient uh, has been taken back to a treatment area in the emergency room, then they're welcome to have one well visitor uh, to come back with them. And, uh, and again, as, as Alan and Dr. Gunn Nolan have said, this has probably been the hardest part uh, one of the hardest parts about being uh, for our patients when they're in the hospital is not having the comfort, not having the support of a loved one to be with them. So we want to make sure that we're allowing as much opportunity as possible for that to happen. Spencer, could you also comment on our visitation for COVID-19 patients that are admitted? Thank you. So again, this is another big change. Uh, you know, other, uh, we've, we've not typically allowed visitors to come for patients that are here for COVID-19. Uh, we've changed that. Uh, as again, that's a, a, a very important part of the healing process to be able to have that support. So we are allowing patients that, uh, that, are, that are here for COVID uh, or, 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 or on uh, 
isolation precautions, for other reasons, we are allowing those folks to have one well visit visitor at the time. Uh, and we're asked that those folks, of course, uh, understand the risk of, of, uh, of being in the room with the COVID positive patients. And of course, we'll, we'll offer uh, PPE and allow them to, to take advantage of the precautions that they need to. But uh, we want to encourage that where it's appropriate to have one visitor come and see those patients. I think we covered all of the main topics that we wanted. And I just to Spencer, you may have said it, but just to confirm that 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. is seven days a week. Um, Saturdays and Sundays visitations are included as well. Um, in the past, we would only allow one person per day and you couldn't switch out, it had to be. So we're gonna limit the visitation to two at a time, but other two can come. It's just, we need to, we need to keep it to, uh, to just two people. Our rooms are, um, are not large. Um, and so for, for uh, safety and, and still doing um, some social distancing, uh, that's why we limit it to that, the, the number of two. So let me um, <clears throat> let's stop there and open it up to questions. Just, um, we've got several folks. I don't see any questions currently in the chat. So maybe to, to make this easy, if you've got a question, just maybe uh, either raise your hand using the little hand feature or um, take yourself off mute and, and call your name and then we'll, we'll try to do the questions in orderly fashion if we could. Hey there, Alan. It's Daniel from ABC 13. Thank you for taking some time for us. You bet, Daniel. What's your question? How can we help? Sure. Uh, how many patients are, are you guys treating? And obviously, as Dr. Gunn mentioned, this is a sigh of relief for everyone in the hospital right now. Could you kind of reiterate that and just kind of the feeling of relief that's in the hospital system right now? Well, I'm not sure I would go as far as to call it relief, Daniel. Um, that's, that's, uh, that, would be, that would be nice. Um, we, we've gone through, uh, you know, 732 days um, and counting. We are still under a national um, crisis, as you know. I think that there's a, a, a palpable sense of um, gratitude that we have gotten through another surge, which was bigger than the surge before that, and that one was bigger than the first surge. So I think we're starting to gain confidence that we can uh, that we can manage um, what we're asked to take care of. Um, I do think that uh, Sharanda's Dr. Gunn Nolan's example is more. I think, we're taking a positive pause. We're kind of regrouping. We're um, unsure whether we'll see there are other variants that are out there and this virus by its nature will continue to mutate until we get to a sufficient herd immunity that will, uh, that will put us at bay. So I, I, would, I would say relief may be over-exaggerated, Daniel. I think um, taking a pause, being grateful for what we have and, uh, and reassessing would probably be the better way I would describe it. And for our current clinical number, we have just under 10 across the market. About a third of those are in Danville and two thirds in Martinsville. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Other questions? Luis, it looks like you're muted if you're asking. I think I see your lips moving, but I don't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. The most commonly stated word in 2021. Can you hear me now? Absolutely. And um, you guys touched on it a bit. Well, what are some of the factors that have allowed for these changes? Um, Spencer, do you want to touch that one? I can. I, you know, I think the uh, one of the things that we we looked at in coming up with this is just the 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 change in the total number of COVID patients that we we had. So as Dr. Gunn Nolan said, we've had 10 across the market. Uh, I mean, as, as early as two or three weeks ago, you know, we had three, four times that. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's as we've seen that steady decline. And I think also, you know, the trends nationally show that uh, this, this is an isolated our community that although, you know, we, we yet to be seen whether we're in a lull or we're going to have another surge in the fall, we don't know yet. But right now we feel comfortable with it. Also, the transmission rate has coming down. Um, if you follow the, the uh, information that's put out by the health department, I think we're, I think both Danville and Martinsville are classified in a 
moderate transmission area, which just, you know, a week or two ago, we were in a very high transmission area. So those are the things that we look at when we try to, you know, when we're looking at changing our, our visitation policy. Um, and again, as Alan said, I just think we're in a, we're in a spot where we can take a breath and regroup and, uh, and, uh, and make this change. Another question that the community kind of gets a bit confused on is, you know, some have been advised not to wear the mask and some are still wearing them. So what's the advice that you, you guys give when out in public? I know it's going to be required in the hospitals. That's all up here, Allie, Dr. Gunn, Nolan. Will you take care of that one, please? They have um, made mask wearing clear as mud at this point. Um, <laughs> first and foremost, the easiest part is that it doesn't apply to healthcare, right? And then when do I wear it and when don't I wear it and why should I not wear it and why should I? So CDC does have a website that you can go to and look for your county to see what you're classified in as spread. Um, through that, the recommendation is if you're green or in low risk that you don't necessarily have to wear a mask if you're fully vaccinated. Um, for the yellow or moderate risk, it's if you have a chronic medical condition that would put you at higher risk or unvaccinated, you should still mask. Um, and if going indoors in a very crowded area, you should still mask. And then if you're listed in a high transmission or red zone, um, the recommendation would be to mask if indoors period, vaccinated or unvaccinated. You know, those recommendations are really nice if you can look up every county you're going to. Um, to be honest, we know masking still protects um, people. And I want people to know, you know, vaccinated, you are in a lot better position than someone that is not. Um, but there's still the risk of spread. So um, what I advise for most is if you're going to be in a crowded area, especially of mixed vaccine status in an indoor crowded scenario, that would be the time um, for myself that I would feel most comfortable making sure I had a mask on for the sake of myself and those around me. Um, if you're outdoors gathering or you're able to space um, out and you're in an area of low transmission, you know, now's the time that we could probably take advantage of seeing some smiles and some faces. And quite frankly, I would really love to do so to actually see people more than just their eyes. Um, it does make a difference of our human to human um, communication. And because we're not so sure how long this lasts, you know, we want to make sure that we're taking advantage of, of times when we have a lot lower transmission and spread. Um, we saw quite a bit of spread with Omicron for those that were vaccinated or unvaccinated, not requiring, not causing severe disease um, for those that were vaccinated. And so the hope is that we're slowly encroaching on that herd immunity status. Um, so time will tell about another variant and, and if there's another surge. But at this time, we're in a lot better position than we've ever been. Um, so I, I say all that to say the CDC has tried to make it um, simple. It's not. Um, if you're concerned, continue to wear your mask. If you have chronic medical conditions, you're safest with your mask on. But if you're outdoors, um, we're able to space um, and you don't have severe community spread, you are, are okay to take that mask off. And my, last question, my last question um, would be, I know there's a big confusion too, because we've seen numbers go down, but a lot of individuals are doing those tests at home. So how do we get a true feel of case numbers and if it's you know still safe to, to I guess, relax a bit? I'm happy to answer that one too. Um, so it is confusing. What we do is we take a sample size, knowing that there are people testing at home, so they may not get qualified into VDH data. Um, but we know that we take sample size and that percent positivity for the number of people that we test, and then that applies to that population. So when the CDC gets that information, they're looking at a percent positivity based on the number of people that were screened or tested um, over that time period, usually it's a rolling seven day. And if they have, you know, for the 800 people that were tested, half of those came back positive, then that's obviously, you can apply that to the entire community and there's a high rate of spread. Um, we are seeing, I'm thankful that people are able to test at home. Those test kits are, are good and useful, especially when we get into a testing crisis. Um, but because of the sample size that we're getting from what's tested within our medical centers, then we can get a pretty good sample size of who is being tested um, and, and apply that. 
We also follow the trends, um, trends for the state. You can see the hot spots, um, and you can see the hot spots as they've kind of made their wave across the state. Um, so the CDC and BDH watch that really closely as well. Great questions. Thanks, Dr. Ganolan. Other questions you might have? Bill, is that you? Do you have a question? Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know how to raise my hand. <laughs> no problem. You speaking up will work just fine. I just wanted a, a clarification uh, from Dr. John Nolan. When you, it, it's a little bit awkward for me to try to write this when you say we have just under 10 patients in the market, two thirds in Martinsville, a third in Danville. Would I be accurate to say that there are nine in the market, six in Martinsville, three in Danville? We don't usually go by um, the specifics of the community as we've given these reports over time. We've just found, uh, and these are built to try to be compliant with guidelines that we've been given around um, protection of individuals and, and they're in, because the numbers are small in the communities. So, so that's why, but you could, you could generally say that. I think it would be, uh, it would be inaccurate to give a specific number but uh, but I, th I think in 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 general your math is accurate. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, and I pre appreciate you all doing this today. And um, I know that's good news for the community that uh, people. We hope it is good news, Bill. Well. And so I appreciate you sharing that with the community. We're excited to, uh, and please be patient um, as you come through our screening. We will, as Spencer said earlier, we will still ask all of our visitors and, and guests to screen. That mandate uh, or that guidance will not change for the foreseeable future. So, uh, you know, as, as you come and there may be a, a small line, um, just be patient and tell your favorite St. Patrick's Day joke. That, that'll make it a little easier. Great, thank you very much. Okay, other questions? Uh, yeah, I've got uh, just one. Um, you know, over okay. the course of uh, covering this pandemic and, of course, talking with uh, Dr. Gunn Nolan over uh, many, many community uh, press conferences, uh, you know, we've, we've heard a lot about um, the, the pressure and the stress of medical staff as they continue to uh, navigate through this pandemic. Um, does this announcement today, does it also come with a sense of relief for medical staff? Are, are those overworked and overtired people uh, able to um, breathe for a little bit now? I feel like um, I'm probably the one to answer that. <laughs> and I'm happy to do so. Uh, you know, to be honest, Callie, we have done this a long time and this press conference feels different because it is kind of like taking a deep breath. Uh, I think we're all a little cautious to feel that sense of relief. Um, I would like to call it relief, but I, I don't know that that cautious optimism as we move into the next few months. Um, but we also understand the need to take that deep breath. We've changed a lot of things. It's been survival mode which is supposed to be very short lived and it's been survival mode for two plus years. So what we have to do is take advantage of these moments when we can take that deep breath and reset. And you can see that and feel that palpably in both facilities. Um, everyone understands what a blessing it is um, to be in the situation that we're in right now. And our hope is that that only continues to get better. Um, but the last two years have taught us a lot, um, prepared us for potentially the future. And so as we move after this, this deep breath and this reset, um, we're not also just going to sit by and, and not plan for the winter. So, um, you know, we'll regroup, reset, take our deep breath and, and begin preparation for anything potential to come. Um, so that we know we're not blindsided by that. But we're all really thankful to have this moment to, to at least share positive news to get families back involved um, here in-house face-to-face conversations 
go a lot further um, clinically at bedside than they do via telephone or even virtually um, on a video conference. So, uh, you know, we're happy to make this step. It is a refreshing change instead of sharing bad news. Um, I think I've gotten emotional with you guys many times. So to be able to smile and um, give good news is, is, a, is a nice change. Spencer, what would you add to Kelly's question? You know, I, I, yeah, to me, I think, I think Dr. Gunnolan hit it on the head. It, it, it feels more like a, a chance to take a deep breath. And I, and I think it's honestly probably still too early um, to, to even start to reflect on, on the last two years. Uh, at least that's the sense I get from uh, talking to folks here. Um, you know, the only thing that I would add to that, um, you know, our folks have been through a lot. Um, you know, the stress that, um, that Alan and I feel is different than the folks that are working on the front line. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, e every day that I come into the hospital, I, I continue to be in awe of what I have seen our staff do uh, over the past, uh, again, off of two years or more. I mean, it's a uh, healthcare folks generally rise to the occasion. It's something I've seen over and over again in my career. But as Dr. Gunnolan said, typically these are these are events that last a day, a couple of weeks. But to you know to be in a situation where we've been going now for, for two years is uh, is extraordinary. So uh, again, I I, we're, I think we're cautiously optimistic, and I think as in the days and weeks we'll have more time to to reflect, contemplate, and hopefully celebrate some uh, as well, uh, and and get and turn our attention to some more positive and exciting things. Maybe one last question, if somebody has another question I'd like to add, and then we'll let you get back to your day. I'll ask one more question, if that's okay. Please, thanks. Yeah, another one rose, uh, another question arose, and I'm kind of getting that everyone's asking the question of, can we let our guard down? And um, can you, you know, answer that we shouldn't let our guard down, yeah. and what would happen? And we shouldn't because we, we could go backwards. I think that's the, you're picking up on that correctly, Louise. We need to still be vigilant, even if we're vaccinated and boosterized. Um, we still need to be um, aware that uh, that we're still in a you know in a world health crisis. Um, you know, we're facing uh, a lot of challenges in our world these days. And, and as Spencer said, we'd love to be able to say this is a victory, and I think at some point we can. Um, but uh, if we've looked at anything over history. We know that, uh, that uh, viruses take time to get to a stage where you can truly say, you know, we are victorious. There is no more polio. Um, pick, pick other, you know, major world disease that we've been struggling with for years. It, it's not going to just be done in two years. So I think you, you are correct. We need to remain vigilant. We need to follow the guidelines. There's a lot of conflicting information out there. Your best source of information is your primary care physician that you trust and respect. Um, please don't stop seeing healthcare professionals because you're afraid of uh, going out. I think that's where we can with confidence say, it's safe to go visit and, and get your checkups and go visit your physician. And if you're having stroke symptoms or heart attacks or any other emergency, please don't feel that you are, um, burdening the hospital by coming that's what we do we'll take care of you and we're here and available and open uh doors are open and eager to to see you but please remain vigilant in protecting yourself and others thank you so much everyone for taking the time to do this and answering our question you're welcome um as corey said in the beginning we've been recording this um he'll get a link to that to each of you um that have participated if you have additional questions that you would like to ask as you get ready to run this, and we appreciate you for running it um, in your individual news sources, please reach out to Corey and he'll do his best to get in touch with us and answer any additional questions you might have. Thanks everyone, have a great day. Thanks y'all for your time. Thank you everybody. <laughs>